Welcome to today's episode and the topic of everyday racism and in the 21st century and its roots. Today, we're going to talk about the questions of what is race, how do we perceive race, uh, how and why does it still matter, and where is it actually coming from? What's the historical background about it? For that conversation, I invited Manuel da Silva. He already uh, lived in different countries and also has a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of things to tell us. Now he's living in Berlin and working at Salando. And next to that job, he's a professional coach and he also coaches a soccer team and he also teaches bachata. So he's all around the place, knows a lot of things, has a lot of network, and of course, also a lot of things to tell us. For getting to know him a little bit better, I'm going to link down in the description the Instagram account and also the LinkedIn account if you want to find out more about uh, Manuel anyways. And if you want to jump around in our conversation, of course, you can do that. For that, I put timestamps down, so feel free to jump around and find your most interesting topics. Then I can just say thank you very much, Manuel, for being here today, for taking the time and letting us know a little bit more about your life, your experience, and the topic that we chose for today. Warm welcome to you. Warm welcome, Manuel da Silva. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dagmar, to, <laughs> for having me here on this uh, on this conversation. So um, I'm Always. really looking forward to it as well. So that was a nice introduction as well. So thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was the plan. Great. <laughs> Then we immediately start into the conversation. You can uh, maybe, first of all, give us a little bit introduction to you, your life, where you grew up and uh, your experience with the topic of race already. So the listener is getting a small little intro into your life. Yes, definitely. Uh, so I was born uh, in Angola, uh, Luanda, to be more specific. This is like uh, the capital of uh, Angola in Africa. So... I was born there, and um, at the age of, of at the age of four or five, um, my uh, uh, my dad got uh, um, got killed in the war. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was like a soldier, and my mom was uh, used to be a doctor. Uh, didn't want actually to raise me on her own. So basically, what uh, she did is basically kind of like uh, pass pass actually uh, the duty of like raising me uh, to my uncle. And my uncle took me to uh, um, to Belgium, so to Antwerp to be more specific, and that's basically how I um, kind of like moved from from uh, Africa to uh, to Europe. Mm -hmm. So in Belgium, um, I was kind of like five years old when I kind of like uh, got into Antwerp. Um, went to school after a couple a couple of weeks. So in terms of like a, um, in terms already like languages you can already imagine actually the differences moving actually from Portuguese to uh, uh, to Flemish mm -hmm. and then we also wanted to um, be better at French so French was like the, the language that we were speaking at home um, so spent some time in in Antwerp um, till it was around um, 16 17 and then afterwards like moved to Brussels to kind of like uh, finish like the last years of high school and then did my university studies. Um, and after that, I decided to take um, a uh, international career path. And that brought me actually to, to London. And from London, I then moved uh, to Berlin um, like a couple of years later um, after that. And that's basically where I am right now in uh, Berlin, uh, Germany, Berlin. So yeah, that's basically in a nutshell my uh, my kind of like background where I moved actually from Angola to Belgium and then United Kingdom and then to Germany where I am right now. <laughs> nice. That is a lot of traveling. And also I know you travel, love traveling and you do it a lot, but also yes. living in <laughs> other countries is also a great thing. And for you um, to start off the topic itself, what is your personal definition of ways? I think like in terms of like race, we talk about like uh, um, my my definition of race is mostly um, a categorization of like uh, um, like boxes where you, you kind of like feel where you belong or where you kind of like uh, are um, distributed. So 
most of the time um, it would come actually from outside. Uh, but also like ident identifying it with, with that with that group is also something that's really um, that's quite important I would say. So I think like in the like uh, in the very beginning like, or ages ago it was mostly about like uh, um, power mm -hmm. where we kind of like distributed actually a race um, according to power according to uh, to social status and then um, when you look at apartheid it was mostly about like uh, systems, but also like a different uh, um, like categorization um, based on like economics, but also based on like a pure um, pure racism, let's say. Um, and now it's like I think mean, now it's mostly like um, it's less hard than before, but like there's still like some 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 uh, some splits mm -hmm. being done um, unconsciously and consciously. But in general, I would say it's like, or like somehow like or 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 brain or capacity likes actually to kind of like compartmentalize like things, put things in boxes or put people in, in boxes, mm -hmm. and this is like a way to do that in order actually to kind of identify. Oh, this person is part of like the um, the African community, so I have like an image what what they do or what their values stand for and, mm -hmm. and things like that. I think that's. That's more like uh, what comes into that place, um, like when it comes to that definition of uh, of race. So categorization uh, of people um, with their um, yeah with their groups that they uh, belong to or they feel that they belong to um, as well. Nice. I also like the the um, the picture of okay, there is an outer part who's defining your ways, but also an inner part of yourself if you are identifying with the group. And also that mm -hmm. it's not just flat like, oh, it's the skin color, because that is the topic that I always have a problem with when people talk about race. And uh, for the people who do not know, uh, I would then identify as white. And I always say, like, if you put me in front of a white wall, I'm basically camouflaged because uh, that's <laughs> there's no possible way to get uh, any whiter. But uh, every time that conversation comes up, um, I wonder why people just uh, stay with skin color, which uh, is just the definition and it's like yeah but it's just skin and it's still biological skin everyone has it so what is the big deal so what is your experience there so i think like you 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 will be experiencing that like a lot like it, certainly in the very beginning like like young age <laughs> so people will kind of like uh, judge the skin first like mm -hmm. i mean that's basically what you see first and because your brain would like actually to kind of rationalize this, we'll put that in a group mm -hmm. as well. So, um, and then when you start to ask people, okay, where they are from or anything like that, then there's like a, um, a there might be a disconnect because like uh, they might be actually from the US or something like that. And maybe your your image of the US is like white and, and so mm -hmm. on. So that's also like a, one of the things that's quite interesting, I think, so there's always a phase like there's phases um like when you grew up certainly as a um as a um, black person i can only speak from my perspective mm -hmm. um so in the very beginning when you're when you're a kid you play with everyone and things like that so you don't really have like you're not really conscious about that until the age of maybe like a seven eight where you kind of like feel differences um between kind of like a, um, you kind of see groups being formed and you also get like a, um, some jokes um, or some stuff so one of the things that really happens a lot when it comes to like a, um, black kids for instance is like uh, people touching their hair mm -hmm. and kind of like uh, people touching their skin and kind of like uh, asking them yeah why 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 do you have that skin color um, I mean and then there's kind of like some jokes that can be done there as well. So like, yeah, um, maybe you had like a like a too much chocolate or something like that. So those kind of things. I mean, like it seems it comes across as very innocent when you're a kid, but then like it's deeply rooted as well because like that 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 kind of questioning comes from somewhere and maybe like from parents or anything like that. So you never know actually what's what's been uh, what's been told like uh, to kids as well. So. Those kind of innocent, innocent kind of like remarks, comments, and so on, and then basically you understand you're you're different. You can also see it, 
um, you go deeper into that understanding that you're different. Mm -hmm. um, but also your household also, like uh, your family also tells you that you're different. So there's a lot of like conversations that happens in households, um, black or white, um, that goes into the direction of like, uh, you are very different. So in, um, in our household, what we, what we kind of like uh, came across like communications was like, uh, uh, oh, um, whatever you're doing, like an activity that would be like considered outside of like what we're doing in our rituals or what mm -hmm. we're doing in terms of like um, our family would be considered, ah, that's, that's like white people stuff. Um, that's something that you can like come across like a lot. So that's what white people do. That's what like, um, so you already kind of like uh, start to kind of like make a difference. Okay, there's like a uh, different groups, but also different activities and different stuff that uh, uh, people do that are different from each other. Mm -hmm. So might come across as humoristic, but also deep down, it might come across as like divisive um, in a sense. Um, so at a young, at a young, very young age, I was interested in, for instance, like uh, um, cartoons, but also Japanese cartoons. Um, and that's basically kind of considered as like not really African, but also like a, um, not really white. So it's basically kind of like a, something that's uh, that basically kind of puts you in a, in, a, in another group as well. And people like pick pick up uh, pick up on that as well. Um, so that's kind of like the childhood. And then when you get like into middle school, like that that fraction of middle school, you will also see like a lot of differences in terms of like how your how your um, how you, how people pupils in the same class would would treat you um, and like how different you are as well. I think like um, as a little as a little black kid, um, I've been always been I mean always actually the the only one like only black kid within like a, a, a space. So yeah. most of the time, like I, I was, I was always like the only black kid there mm -hmm. or only black person. So um, has, it has always been like fascinating to see actually how people react um, around that because mm -hmm. most of the time it would be kind of like a, um, making fun, joking or, or basically um, denigrating or like finding like finding ways to interact but not knowing actually which which kind of way was the uh, best one. So um, they would kind of like, a, um, yeah, would, would go out of the way actually to kind of like make jokes or anything like that. So mm -hmm. that's basically what, 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 what kind of dynamic I have been like uh, uh, used to. And also, of course, um, you would have like also people that uh, uh, take advantage and, and kind of start uh, bullying or anything like that. So that could, that's also like something that uh, I, I did. Um, did experience um so there's like an interesting thing that happens like in in, in that phase with 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 with, uh, with kids or at least like where i grew up like i grew up in, in antwerp uh which is like like flemish speaking uh, the flemish community uh where you have a um where you still have like this deep deep sense of like a um superiority um like white versus black mm -hmm. um and where you can kind of like sense like a, a people like like would you would put you down in a certain category, mm. um, and this comes actually history. This comes actually from history. So when you think about a country that has colonized a bigger country such as Congo, mm. and back in the days, <laughs> actually not too long time ago, um, what they were doing is basically kind of like a, we don't we we're not really speaking what. Leopold did back in the days there, which yeah. was horrible. But also we're talking about we're talking about like a, um, one of the things that always surprised me was like back in the days they um, they were shipping um, black people mm -hmm. inside the country, put them in a sort sort of kind of zoo, mm -hmm. and then like just creating like a sort of habitat and people would go there as a picnic and then go and see black people. Let's go see black people in in the zoo. And I have pictures of like um, like like black kids put in a cages, like in, in yeah. like a like a bird, bird cage as well. So um, so imagine actually having this as like a um, a kind of like a um, social background or like a um, like this this is like an image of like a frame of reference. This is what black people are, and then you see a black kid in your class. It's like oh, I have so many questions. Like 
Um, so there's 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 a lot of things that goes actually from generation to generation, yeah. but also that that um, that understanding or that placement of black people will also go from generation to generation because for most for most of them, not sure, but like I only kind of speak from from what I what I think mm-hmm. here is basically kind of like, okay, I put black people in certain categories. Mm-hmm. Either way, they're ref- refugees. Um, either way, um, they're uh, basically not really intelligent, um, or they're they're basically kind of like an inferior or anything like that. So, um, so those are kind of like things that I would would kind of like categorize. Okay, mm-hmm. this is where they are. So uh, uh, they're not better than us, or they're not um, like they're not actually more intelligent than us, and and mm-hmm. like that. So you can sense that, and you can see that as well. I think. Um, that's basically what 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 I kind of like uh, seen or experienced growing growing up. Certainly, um, middle school and then high school, um, it's a part of it in university as well. Mm-hmm. Very interesting because when I when I hear your boxes that you just uh, counted and said like, okay, um, not not really intelligent or maybe uh, not not just a refugee or anything else and mm-hmm. i think about you and how i know you and i think like you are such an overachiever like you're you're doing all the things all these uh, different things and uh, that made me of course think like do you think there is um like combination of your upbringing and thinking like i want to accomplish a lot in order to not put or be put in one of these boxes yeah um <laughs> In general, I've been always revengeful. Like, uh, ah, okay. like <laughs> if, if someone if someone tells me no, it's like okay, all right. <laughs> then of course I'm I mean, doing it. <laughs> well, my my girlfriend says like it's ego, so I think like we're gonna put, we can put that into ego as well. <laughs> like in the sense like um, my ego get hurt like uh, when when you kind of like uh, uh, underestimate me, <laughs> um, and in that sense, I've been always like. Um, think oh how can I break into that section how can I break into that uh, um, category um, like I think being I think that's also like unconsciously why I'm also like in spaces where um, they don't see many people like me mm-hmm. because I've been always like okay let me let me show you um, that we can also do that or let yeah. me show you that the black person can also do this so I think like maybe that's like unconsciously what has happened like during all these years um, where um, I've always been like uh, the only black person in the room, but also because I'm the only black person in the room, I'm kind of like a um, feel the obligation to represent, but also mm-hmm. overachieve mm-hmm. and also dominate dominate that space as much mm-hmm. as possible. Um, so that has been kind of like my, my that can be actually my take on, on, on this, um, uh, on the situation yeah so when i think about like what i just said it sounds like me when it comes to like comparing all those stages um, um there as well so um trying to overachieve but also um yeah like like representing the best of best of myself mm-hmm. um so that's basically kind of like a, um something that ha- has happened a lot and it's also a great thing because that, uh, first of all, makes you a role model, but also in a specific kind of ta- trailblazer for uh, people to come after you and uh, also um, bring up the same uh, awesomeness in themselves and uh, you just paved the way for them. Yeah, true. Um, I think what I, what I, what the, the thing that I don't like about like, like, races and and, mm. and and things like that being put like in a certain race so so you you've been put actually in, in a certain box and you have expectations towards that um and at some point you start to believe the narrative that you are mm. mm-hmm. that box yeah. and it's not like only you it's also like your community that starts to think like that as well mm-hmm. so one of the things that happens as well that i mean you start to kind of like be interested in stuff that uh, your community is not really like uh, known for being in- interested in, mm-hmm. and then you're 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 being labeled ha- you're you're trying to act white. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always like 
kind of like interesting to me that your own community is also like a, a kind of like pushing me up in the sense like hey what you're doing is not actually what we're, what we're known for mm -hmm. um, and therefore you don't kind of like feel like us when you do that mm -hmm. um, or when you speak like that uh, or you act like uh, act like that as well so that's also interesting um what i kind of like um see happening is just like there's a lot of like um victim mindset happening mm -hmm. uh in that sense so which is like one thing that i really don't like at all so like victim victimize yourself oh i'm being treated like this because i'm black mm -hmm. um or i'm treated like this because i'm, I'm, a, I'm a different race so it might be the case that your treat like that as well because of that but like i would never take that as like a uh, even though it's like primary i would never take that as like something that i i can accept because i can like once again i cannot accept just like being being a victim mm -hmm. uh, in a sense even though like i'm going to something and say hey i'm i'm still in control i'm i can control actually whatever the narrative is mm -hmm. um and i can control actually how i take that information um as well so um there's also like something like the victim Olympic happening. Like, oh, okay. Being, Do you need to explain that? Victim Olympic is just like um, this, this, this fact of like um, um, maybe different um, different races comparing themselves, like or different kind of groups comparing themselves. Like, mm -hmm. huh, we had it, we had it worst in history. Oh, we had slavery, we had this and this and that. Um, so, kind of like this, this like victim olympic going on um even like it's it's baffling because like it's even like outside the race context as well like um all right you can you, like nowadays you cannot really have like conversations where you can express yourself without actually hurting people and then people are like oh women have it, had it worse ah, or okay. black people have it worse or jewish people have it worse mm -hmm. and it's like okay you're getting into like very slippery terrain, but like it's just like a lot of comparison in in spaces we shouldn't be comparing because like mm -hmm. most of the time it's basically expressing actually what your experience has been um that you didn't like your experiences but you're ready to move on and that you're ready actually to kind of, uh, um, do better um yeah. but but this victim mindset like just reminds me of like uh, being stuck in the past mm -hmm. and still remembering actually what has happened although it has happened already before. Um, but what do we do? What are you doing actually to kind of get, heal from that and going forward? I think that's like really important to me. So not seeing yourself as a victim, but rather see yourself as someone that you would like to do better. Um, mm -hmm. And I always like thought about like, whatever I was going through is like, hey, let's imagine better. Let's, let's, let's think about this and that. So um, yeah. That's a great way of, of like thinking about it. I, I hear stuff like that too. And I think like, hmm, comparison. I also try then to compare like, okay, how did I grow up? And there were just uh, white kids in my class. And I'm like, ah, oh, I never had that experience, you know? And um, for example, when I, because you, you were uh, talking about, okay, when people start uh, to ask you or even not even asking, just touching your hair to have the, that experience because it feels differently. Um, I thought like, oh, interesting. I had the same experience in Kenya, but this is exactly also the comparing like, oh, okay, can that happen to anyone else? But uh, I was just baffled about it because um, the kids never had uh, seen or touched white skin. And I was like, fascinating. And I was like, okay, so they, they need to do that now to just have their curiosity uh, somehow uh, satisfied. But it was uh, interesting for me. And I was like, okay, so how do I go along with that? Not stopping all the time or not having the kids uh, uh, crawling all over me and uh, also saying like, your, your hair is so different. And I'm like, is it though? It's just hair. And it's, I think it's most of the time mm -hmm. me being naive thinking it's just skin. Maybe you have a little bit more melanin, but it's just skin. Mm -hmm. Biologically, it's all mm -hmm. the same. And I also, mm -hmm. when, when the t topic of racism comes up and uh, you also mm -hmm. touched on that already, which I liked was like, okay, we also have religion in that and uh, which group was better off or not better off and so on and so forth. I was always, but all of us are humans. That is something that is completely the same all the time. So where does it even come from that we're trying to separate ourselves from each other mm -hmm. all the time? 
uninteresting uh, where we grew up or which uh, religion we have or which skin color we have. This is something yeah. that is strange to me. I think I think it's not that strange because like we've been always like um, we like he, like when you look at history, we 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 always like tried actually to kind of like, uh, split ourselves because mm -hmm. of power. Like power is one of like power is one of those reasons. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the haves and the not haves, um, the fortunate and less fortunate. Mm -hmm. um, so those one who can and those one who can't. So there's always like um, separations due to kind of like maybe like uh, advancing one group more than others uh, as well. So so right now we kind of like, uh, like we live in a period where we broke all those like silly stereotypes mm -hmm. um, that some groups cannot do that or um, some groups are more gifted or anything like that. It's more about like a, um, individualistic speak, speaking actually um so was really great and have like any opportunities and that they can have but also it depends actually on on your on the society that you that you're, where you live in as well mm -hmm. that's that's also like a important um but it's i would say like it has always been like that like a, a, the, the divisiveness is just like a I think like the last the last like a the last decades because we, we were living kind of like such in a quasi quasi peaceful era mm -hmm. we thought that everything was like uh, totally right and then you see um things like uh, ukraine happening and and, yeah. and um and russia and so on so um now we have like a like a certain kind of like a um certain kind of attitude against russians as well um, even though it's like state against states, we, we kind of like, uh, still like have like this this association. Oh, you Russian, you must be like a um, like a supporting this cause, and also like degrading them into like a, another part of uh, another part of like a um, another part of like societal like a kind of like chain. Let's say mm -hmm. so. Like once again, like people like to kind of like put in boxes, but also they like actually to rank as well, like in, yeah. in, in a certain certain way. So it's 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 kind of interesting because to me it has always happened um, like uh, this decisiveness um, and um, throughout the history you will see how maybe the elite were from like uh, were from, like were kind of like first and then you had also like a um, religion um, as well that played the, the Roman Empire the Ottoman Ent Empire as well um, so. I really like history, like reading upon it because like it's just reflects actually what we're going through. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes history repeats itself most of in the time. Cycles, yeah. um, in in Absolutely. cycles. And uh we're maybe too dumb to understand the, the lessons. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. I'm I'm but, with oh, you on that. That sounds like <laughs> that sounds like something that happened before. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we doing that again? But it's it's really also the the example you're bringing up right now. When when I think about that, why are we humans do that? That we put that in boxes. It's not just an understanding thing, or it's a comfortable thing. But uh, if you look at Ukraine and Russia right now, that uh, in Germany I see that too. That people get angry about Russians again. I one on the on the one side understand the re-traumatization uh, of the Second World War, and especially old people say like, okay, it's happening again, and this is horrible. But uh, nevertheless, you have like uh, 150 million people in Russia and you have like 45 million, I think, in Ukraine. And not all of them, first of all, want to participate in that war. Second of all, are interested in it, uh, meaning uh, we shouldn't have that. Like we, we all are humans. And nevertheless, you get drawn into all of this drama. And I really do not understand humans and why they get themselves into this position all the time and again. Yeah, I think <clears throat> I think it's it's a mix of like a um, yeah, it's kind of this one is quite difficult and and I don't I don't want to like say things that I <laughs> that I <laughs> will regret later or something like that. It's just like <laughs> it's 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 just a curious case um, for me because um, one thing. One thing that just stood out in this episode of like uh, Ukraine and Russia is basically mm -hmm. kind of like the, um, the refugee the refugee attitude mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in the West, like uh, um, because like 
some part of like you like you've seen like also like uh, objectively you've seen that so be, so some countries were like really quickly to uh, to uh, to say hey to open their doors and like hey Ukrainians welcome and then we had Syria and mm. that was like totally another problem yeah. and here is basically okay you can't be blind like there it's just like the different skill color the different actually uh, um difference in, in terms of religion all, although we talk about orthodox and also protestant sometimes mm -hmm. so it's like here it was kind of like okay these people look like us so we're going to we're, we're going to kind of like accept them better than those um those ones were like uh, um from the islamic faith and also going for as well so yeah. it looks like we're we're also putting on the pedestal or we always we also rank the um rank the um the amount of of uh, of, of pain or something like that mm -hmm. oh because i because i can connect with this white person yeah or with this white refugee um i'll gonna give it more give them more value than those refugees from syria because mm -hmm. i cannot really connect with them like on um on, on basis of like a religion skin color um and also like a certain values so that's always like interesting interesting to me as well um to see uh, how people behave in in, in these situ uh, situations as well so i mean i mean i when i came to when i came to belgium um like there was there were still like um, some wars happening mm -hmm. in, in, in angola and, and all stuff so basically it was really vivid to see actually the parents going through going through like the um going through like the the the, um, the i would say pain of wars but like just like um being being worried about what's going what was going on uh and things like that so i i understand i understand actually like how they were uh back in the days but to be honest like our surrounding and people around like didn't really care that much um and now we have like the same situation um i understand what everyone's going through um and suddenly like people also it looks like it's because it's so close that's what they like people use as well yeah, yeah. like so because it's so close i understand it better it's just like interesting so those people were like living far and going through like really painful experiences you would not understand them because it was so far mm -hmm. but also when you read the history like uh, i mean i mean whatever happens in the in the us feels also close to you but yeah. it's also far yeah it's just like a lot of like it's just like a lot of selection into like okay mm -hmm. I can connect with this trauma so i will accept that this, this yeah. is this is real trauma or this is real and if it's too far from me or too strange i don't want to i don't even want to touch it mm -hmm. or i don't even want to understand it um so that's like the curious thing a curious thing to me um with, with these things uh when when these things happen um, yeah so yeah and it's also interesting because um i'm trying to to get a lot of information from all over the world all the time. And then people ask me like, why are you even looking that up, Dagmar? Like really they, they're they judging me on uh, why are you caring about that? Because I also had on the weekend a conversation where they told me, um, um, especially with the Ukraine crisis right now, that in Germany we have differences of, okay, are these white refugees or are these black refugees that have been in Ukraine before and how do we treat that? And I was like, how is that different? To me, it was, again, I'm a little bit naive right. when it comes to that. I was like, yeah, but they all need to get out of a war zone. And what I haven't managed to do now is uh, George Friedman uh, wrote a book uh, and made the case for, we're going to compete for refugees in the future. And right now we, we like say, okay, they're like another class and they need to be somehow integrated into our life. But mm -hmm. especially the Western countries will compete for refugees because they have a problem with getting older all the time, not having enough um, uh, younger people coming and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, that is interesting because I haven't seen that perspective. Most of the time in the area where I live in Eastern Germany, it's always like, oh, okay, another wave of refugees. And I'm like, what is your problem it's like we have so much space here we have so much things to do it's like yeah. uh, 
why is everyone pissed off about that? And, and when they have something like, oh, they take our jobs and like they can't even take our jobs because they don't have permission to work here. Like, what the heck are you talking about? Yeah. I really I mean, don't understand humans. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 interesting in that sense because like it's these are narratives that um, the right will use mm. um, in order actually to make a case. Hey, uh, they don't belong here. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of cases that they're they're doing. Okay, I cannot really agree with everything, but there's some point like okay, when you are going actually to to um, to challenge the um, rule of the land or legal um, legal matters saying if um, if an individual um, like rapes mm -hmm. they should be going to prison mm -hmm. and then it becomes like okay if it's a refugee then they need to send back They're like no they should be like act, like they should be like uh, being considered at the same at the same threshold yeah uh, in that sense you commit a crime, you go, you go away, or you commit a crime. You pay actually for for the crime that you that you paid as mm -hmm. well. It seems like um, because you're a refugee, you have like a let we will, we should have like less patience uh, with you. But that's like on on one part. But coming back into like selection, competing for refugees, I would say um, like I think that there was like a couple of years ago there was like this uh, this slogan. Um, from IFD, um, Deutsche machen wir selbst. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I saw so that one. That was we, embarrassing. We, <laughs> we, we make our own Germans, but the thing is, like, yeah. it's interesting because, like, the country is not actually, um, it's not actually making enough, actually, let's say, humans yeah. faster than it should be. Um, so, therefore, like, maybe the former administration would like, it. Hey, let's open the border and so on. But I think, like, it's mostly that's where like the racism kicks in okay mm -hmm. who are we accepting inside we want to accept actually people that are looking looking like us and having the the same the same values but at the same time we're not really looking at values we're just looking actually at like, what look like. because if it was values values is not actually um something that calculates when you see someone it's just like something that we see in terms of the manners and and, and, and things like that and also mm -hmm. like social social norm and, and and the culture and so on so there's like a deep rooted like a deep rooted sense of like a, um they don't belong to us so that's why we don't really want want to welcome them uh in that sense um even even though like it's really not even like let's try to get to know them no it's basically closing the door right away yeah because you're that skin color i don't want to know know about it and and that's it so i think it, it is like racism is is, is kind of like a also like something that's like a, at some point quite dumb because like you you're you're judging without knowing mm -hmm. and then you you you'll make certainly mistakes into characterizing people because um you're you're going to kind of uh, like uh, put them in the wrong box or putting actually in, in the wrong wrong uh, yeah even though you have maybe PTSD from a former experience that didn't go well mm -hmm. um, and now you're labeling those people uh, in that sense so it's interesting to see sometimes you meet like a someone that's like like let's say um, black and basically you have a bad experience with that person. Like we have a tendency to say, hey, now, from now on, all of them, they're all the same. Mm -hmm. But when you kind of can go through the same experience with someone from your from your own race, um, it looks like you have more patience. Mm -hmm. yeah. this, and, uh, and then next time, like you meet someone that has the same skin color with like a, and committing the same kind of thing, you you wouldn't go like, oh, all of them are the same. All of them, I, I say, mm -hmm. I, I, I say goodbye. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to do anything with them. So it's like an interesting kind of like a way, um, way of of thinking. And sometimes I like, uh, I, I wonder where that's coming from. Where like we have like less patience in terms of like, a, um, like people that are not in part of our group. Sometimes like it's also groups as well. Yeah. Because we're talking about like we're talking about race right now, but like. A different thing that also happens like white color blue color mm -hmm. for instance so people that work in offices and people yeah. that 
don't work in offices. Um, and you so, certain, certainly sometimes have like this divisiveness, like people that work in leadership board and people that, that people that work in startups and people that, that just work in nine to five jobs. Yeah. So it's like there's, there's still like so much like divisive, the divisiveness uh, going on. But that also like comes back to the, to the book of um, the um, tribal leadership mm -hmm. um, as well. So we want to form groups in, in kind of like uh, people that we belong to. Sometimes, sometimes it goes so far off in terms of like uh, not looking really at skin color, it's more like values and things we believe yeah. in. So religion is part of them. Um, entrepreneurship clubs and things like that is part of them. elite right now it's also part of them as well so um so kind of interesting kind of interesting uh taking that so that's 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 kind of like my uh yeah my my thought on on, on that matter and the overlap you know like the, what you explained right now okay it's not just it's jobs it's uh, nationality it's religion there's always an overlap and i think mm -hmm. we are also overbearing ourselves with that it's like okay uh like i would break down to think like oh that is a christian and from germany but why is he black like what mm. the heck it's like nothing of that in my uh, frame of reference has anything to do with that but this is how we put people into groups like oh that can't be or when i look at at me it's like oh why is she a woman and she's starting a company in eastern germany like she shouldn't okay even if that was 10 years ago you still have mm -hmm. people saying that like oh you did that or you they asked me like so what is your husband doing and i'm like i'm not having a husband oh and what is your boyfriend doing I'm like i'm also not having a boyfriend so you have a company and i'm like what the heck mm -hmm. like these overlaps but, are so strange true yeah it's it's also like maybe deep down is it is it like trust Hmm. You mean a question of trust? Yeah, a question of trust. Like, like do I trust them to be like uh, to uh, to be compatible with what I believe in? Ah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's like really interesting. Like in in the sense, like okay, you don't fit my narrative. Mm -hmm. Do I? So I don't trust you. Oh, that's a good point. I haven't thought about that. But so, the moment I would you, think about yeah. it, I would think because you because you want to connect. People yeah. always like naturally want to connect, but like mm -hmm. they connect, they cannot connect with something that's like, uh, like in German they say un unfassbar. Yeah, and and so un unreachable, like, untakeable, uh, tangible. It, yeah, untangible because they don't understand. Like, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, like the lady that you just like, uh, like the person that you just said, like, oh, she doesn't have like a she she has a company, mm -hmm. no husband, no boyfriend. That doesn't connect actually with what I believe <laughs> that in does or connect, what I yeah. like that. Yeah. So like. Like I don't trust that person, or like mm -hmm. this is just like not like someone that that I that connects actually with what I um, yeah what I it's not even believe like what I um what I what I what I what I connect as a reality yeah. or what I connect what I like think how it possible. should be yeah but it's, yeah it's it's also like in the realm of possibility as well yeah because I mean. Once again, we can go into limiting beliefs as well. Like that's yeah. also like uh, the the um, the the source of like limiting beliefs because you don't think these are kind of things that are possible um, in the box of your uh, realm or like mm. uh, um, reality. So therefore, it's not true. Yeah. Interesting. Because basically what I just saw is like a parallel process. This is what we do with nation states. You know, we put, we take a map, we put borders down and say like, okay, this is Germany now, or this is, uh, this is another country. And if you see how the nation states develop and how the, the um, not boundaries, what is the, is it boundaries? Yeah. The states, uh, the state, uh, um, yeah, state yeah, boundaries. boundaries. It's, it's, it's state boundaries. And yeah, I mean, uh, the, an example <laughs> is like uh, the Treaty of Berlin. Yeah, exactly. It's like so, I think Germany is a great example for that. If you see the the last hundred or uh, hundred and fifty years, how the borders of uh, Germany changed, and it's like so maybe just because we change borders doesn't mean we're able to change the borders in our heads at that time. And how much time yeah. will it cost us to break down the borders in our head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, definitely. Borders is like a very interesting, very interesting uh, fact as well. I think. I was I was uh, 
there's like Netflix series, uh, The Ottoman Empire. Oh, I haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's so interesting. It's so interesting. Like, I didn't know like how interesting it was because like the Ottoman Empire ended up that ended around 1924, like 1914, or like mm -hmm. before, before the, the first, first world, world war. war. 1914. Hmm? I mean, this this is like centuries of centuries of like borders that have been yeah. like really different from each other. Like we talk about like uh, even before like or I don't know, don't quote me on this, but like uh, the Byz the the Byzant uh, Byzantine um, Empire, and then you have. Austro Austro -Hung Hungarian power yep. as well, um, and then at some point Poland disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah. It did. Poland was so completely in funny. Germany. <laughs> right. It's not. It's not funny, but it, it's. I mean, you can only kind of take it with like a like sense of humor, like in that sense. But like, can you imagine your country from one day to another? Hey guys. Uh, you're now part of this country. Yep. <laughs> you don't exist anymore. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it's it's interesting how humans like uh, uh, like uh, like I mean, it's human, but also like it's it's so much like power and kind of like integration and things like that, forced integration. Um, and this is nothing. Like when I look at like, uh, um, because here we talk about different nations mm -hmm. all together. But like even in same kind of nations, like for instance, the the, the story, the unification of Japan. Mm -hmm. So Japan had like such a divisiveness in terms of like different houses, different roads, yeah. and different classes and things like that. It took them ages to kind of like um, unify the country. And this is like we're talking about people that are basically kind of like, like the same. Yeah. So not really like let a race mixing it's just like the same kind of people but like different in terms of like classes and different families and so on and they took a long time to unify mm -hmm. and then start actually to kind of like start to go out and and having this like a japanese pride but like before that it was just like like fractions and fractions and fractions of houses and things like that so it's not only kind of like a, uh the country's races but also it's just like okay differences but like that's why like i say deep down like in us in humans just like we we look for the like uh like this divisiveness and also like a uh, belonging into a certain club so could be club family member club race um club political class um <laughs> and so on so that's also what's happening in the U.S., for instance, like mm -hmm. just two par just two parties, and you have like such a divisiveness because of two parties. Yeah, and that's like there you don't even like have like the race, family, and things like that. It's just like two big parties and two different ideology and two different splits, and sometimes they cannot even like agree on each other. There's this like war between liberals and 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 liberals and leftists. Oh. Like it's just like. It's yeah. It's just like a, it's it's so it's so extreme that just like they are all in opposite. And nobody wants to come in the middle. So mm -hmm. that's yeah. The 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 viciousness. It it looks like it's in us, like as human being, but it's like the the um, the outcome is basically in those divisive divising nations, um, like putting nations together that don't belong to to each other. Um, like unifying countries um, or one country, yeah. Berlin Treaty and so on. So, yeah, a lot of those like happy, but deeply ingrained is because of like we're we're kind of like, uh, looking for divisiveness or or unification, but like kind of like it's 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 kind of a weird kind of like human a human thing. Um, yeah, it's. For me, it always, because that brings me to the thinking, like, is there already a flaw in the humanoid template itself? If we always end up uh, with that again, like the cycles of history and you have them repeat and repeat and repeat. And then on the other hand, I think that mm -hmm. we know each other out of the organization ISAC and it works always yeah. great there. You know, nobody cares what religion you have, what skin color you have. It's like, I just work with these people. I know, okay, we can run a project yeah. or anything else. So there's yeah. also the other side that is functioning. And I'm like, ah, can we find something in the middle so we don't have all that mess anymore? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because Isaac, all right, Isaac, I, 
like ideally that's basically what's 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 happening and also we we do have um we do have like this like a uh, uh, core values and things like that so basically in the very beginning the reason why we kind of like are busy kind of like a, um like a, um, we understand each other is because like we said yes to the to the threshold mm -hmm. and the threshold was like um having fun leadership internships and things like that these were the contract we signed the mm -hmm. contract that we unconsciously signed in the sense if i step here these are the things that will be important just yeah. a few things but we all agree that these are kind of things that are important and everyone that is in there uh basically well, is also agreeing on those terms and mm -hmm. conditions so basically kind of like unconscious terms and conditions but i wouldn't say like isaac was always like perfect because like no. um we all we also had like issues with like what what I call like north north and south things. Mm -hmm. So northern countries, countries where like you have like a more richer Euro European countries or European um, like uh, um, local committees um, do have like a more advantage compared to like southern southern ones yeah. or like Latin American north south, uh, south um, or African ones as well. Yeah. You can kind of see kind of like the differences in resources and sometimes not actually. Um, not being able to deliver the same results as well mm -hmm. but still measured at the same at the same on the same stick yeah. or same bar so that's also like something actually to eat. um i mean i seen some de divisiveness like in, in 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 that sense as well and um yeah it it is an organization that's like uh, really interesting to preserve, um, like to see because like it looks like the world that it's it, like how it should be Mm -hmm. but also deep down you also have like a, a human flaws as well in, yeah. in there as well so um yeah i mean you see that once you kind of like travel a little bit more in conferences seminars i mean i think like i think germany is one of the best ones when it comes to like resources mm -hmm. but also um process processes and things like that um but also like the weakness of i think germany is basically wants to change one thing that everyone freaks out. <laughs> everyone freaks yeah. out. It's like, oh my God, it's a new process. <laughs> but also- They you can can't see, just like, change something. <laughs> but that's like where you see like, okay, you still agree to the, to the, to the terms of condition of the, of, uh, of Isaac, but you still have like your, your, uh, uh, your cultural background mm. or cultural like sense of, hey, these things, we, we need processes. Yeah. Uh, and those processes need to kind of like be kind of like <laughs> approved by everybody uh and this is like part of like uh of that of that uh of that heritage yeah let's say so it's um it, it's it's funny like how like sometimes like this is the general value but then the values of like uh, the uh the culture also takes over yeah. at some at some point as well um so and it's it's also for different organizations no organization is like perfect because no. you do, because you have the human, you have the human uh, factor. <laughs> the human factor makes it unpredictable. <laughs> sure, that's the fun part of it. But also, like that's also like the in understanding humans and how they are and things like that. I think like this is the social social um, social interaction, understanding social interactions, like social aspect of things, having like those skills is really important understanding yeah. humans is like such such an important skill to have and sometimes people who don't have it like cannot actually read rooms or read all those mm -hmm. all those things that's why like one of my favorite books is culture map culture map by mm -hmm. um erin mayer where she kind of like uh, goes into um like how business works with different uh with different uh um cultures yeah and this is just like a an interesting interesting book she has like eight measures where you can like see uh, what where the where the kind of like uh, differences are hierarchy how we perceive your hier hierarchy for instance like difference in different cultures how we perceive communication for instance is also different yeah um, I mean for instance if you take communication for instance Germany um, like we have like one side like clear communication which is Germany and then on the other side we have like a maybe like a um, communication that's like subtle. Um, that's more like Japan, mm -hmm. uh, for instance. So where you have to read between the lines um, and things like that. So Asian culture like has like that. It's like a, um, there a lot. 
Um, I mean, once again, like stamping it here, but like <laughs> this is, these are kind of like things that are, you can kind of see in business practices. Yeah. Um, she uses business practices as like a, as a template uh, for these things, because it's a little, a little more easier to kind of like extract, extract from that. So, and it's um, somehow measurable. Otherwise she wouldn't have these data. Yeah, true. Um, how we conduct business is also like, uh, has just a big culture stamp, how we, uh, how we do business. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like very interesting. Yeah. But it's really like what I found out right now, because I was not thinking about that for a very long time. Like you said, like, okay, you have basically uh, terms of the contract and uh, what are we signing consciously or uh, unconsciously? And uh, for the example of Isaac, it was always like, we are a non uh, political and non-religious organization. And I thought like, okay, so how do we do that in business, for example, or how do we do that in families? What are the, the subtle contracts we are signing the moment mm -hmm. we step into a group? What is your take on that regarding, uh, the topic of race? Well, in terms of like, uh, in terms of business, we, we have clear understanding in those things and also a company, like you, you sign a contract mm -hmm. and a contract also like, uh, it tells you, hey, if you do this, you, you're fired. Yeah. If you're, if you step outside of this boundary, you're, you're mm -hmm. fired as well. And most of the time, they have committee, they have um, committees um, of like um, um, that regulate equality, inclusiveness, and things like that. So at least like Salando has like uh, committees and also like uh, resource groups or groups that would kind of like, uh, um, put you makes you feel welcome by mm -hmm. by adding you to to small groups so for instance Orlando has like a um we call it resource groups resource groups for black uh, for black employees mm -hmm. there's resource group for women in tech mm -hmm. um there's resource groups for lgt um LG, well <laughs> the inclusiveness and also lgbtqi mm -hmm. um uh, community as well so a lot of like the resource groups are, are there and that kind of like makes you feel kind of like welcome and part of the company because the company makes some space. So it's basically mm -hmm. kind of making space and corners um, for um, for different groups because yeah. here it's not only race, it's also like different groups mm -hmm. of belonging. And that's uh, that's put their gender as well as like uh, different groups of, uh, up there as well. And race falls, falls into that place as well. Yeah. I think depending actually where uh, your country, where you are, I think like, uh, Germany still struggles with like uh, the notion of race, uh, PTSD <laughs> from what happened before. <laughs> so, so, um, so like talk about race is like very uncomfortable here. Um, okay. Like counting, counting as well. Like we don't like by law we don't where it's not allowed to count race like legally anymore. What do you mean? Um, like what, what? What do you mean by counting? Counting. Um, so basically, after after we counted the Jews in the ah okay in there, okay okay. Um, so there's no there's there's no. Um, I mean, let's say you're not like you're like you're not motivated to count anymore. Like uh, we have so many black people, we have so many Asians. It's like so you're basically discussed to do that because yeah. like uh, uh, because that historic fact. But like other countries, such as like a uh, UK. Um, that's definitely that's definitely okay. Or U.S. So, like in the U.S., for instance, you have um, uh, when you fill in the form, for instance, like uh, which race do you belong to? Yeah. There's still like this this like a section. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's race, but just like which group are you belong to? And it's like, mm -hmm. like still like black African and like like uh, African American, yeah. white, Caucasian, whatever. You you still have that in in the U.S. I'm not sure about UK, but you still have that in the U.S. as well. But this is like something that would never happen or. It's not going to happen in, in, in Germany. Yeah, it's, you're right. We always, whenever I have a legal document that I need to, to, to check boxes, that was, uh, are you, uh, like German nationality or are you another nationality? We do not go yeah. with, ah, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. We go with national, we go with, we go with nationality, but yeah. we don't go with. You're right. Yeah. And by nationality, it's like kind of like something that's, uh, uh that's there. Fascinating. I never thought about that. I was like. Every time I check that box because it's in my mm. passport, I'm like, who gives a fuck? Like, why do I even sign that here right now? So that was always the thing that I thought was strange. Yeah. But I never made that uh, assumption. And also the um, 
yeah. question about the numbers because that is super interesting that you're saying that right now because I had a conversation with um, a Muslim woman and she said there are just 5 million Muslims in Germany and it's like that is nothing we're 82 million in Germany that's like why why is everyone doing such a huge wave and stuff and she's like I have no fucking clue because we're an absolute minority so uh, mm. I don't know why everyone is uh, making a fuss about it. And you saying mm. like, oh, we, we don't count here anymore in, in the matter of uh, we're not counting race anymore because we have PTSD from the Second World War. Absolutely mm. makes sense. Thanks yeah. for the information. Yeah, definitely. I think like the, what's interesting about like what you said, like, uh, min like minorities. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so politically speaking or the politi political game will always like like use a minority in order to make their case. <laughs> Certainly like, like it happens extreme right, left, whatever. Um, so they will always use the minority actually to make the case, hey, they take their job uh, and things like that. So you, like in a political game, you always use, or you always like need a minority actually to kind of like make, make a case in order actually to kind of uh, recognize, hey, that's too much. Yeah. Even though if, even though it's like a small minority, five million to, to quasi 40 million which is like a small piece mm -hmm. but you can like need like i mean it's 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 harsh to say but this is like kind of the politic poli how the political game function yeah. so you create an you create a narrative that's hey those minorities they're kind of like uh, causing trouble um and sometimes you connect with some of the stuff that you might have heard or you might someone heard like someone going through um and that connects actually with so with with something that um, that you can like stand behind mm -hmm. and therefore actually winning winning the vote so when when donald trump actually wanted to become president so which minority did he target mm -hmm. Mexicans. all the mexican race now like it's crazy <laughs> so so it's basically kind of like the, the yeah it's just like um it's an old political political tool or game that uh, that's being played actually. But that it's, also it's, brings again the question of why aren't we open minded enough? I mean, yet now, yeah. Ger uh, Germans, Germans also, but humans yeah. in general, because you know, if you take the example of Trump, who's like, "Oh, the caravans are coming," and I'm like, "What the fuck? What is he talking about? What are the numbers?" Yeah. And it's the yeah. same with. Um, when you look at COVID, I just watched five days of news just to see like, what are they reporting? And they said, okay, we have a toll of uh, like what? 10,000 infections and uh, 1,000 people who died in the beginning. And I'm like compared to, so they put a German map underneath that. And I'm like compared to 82 million, that doesn't even make sense. What are we reporting here? And it's also yeah. the same thing with uh, the Ukraine war, because the, the major thing that media did in the beginning was always uh, targeting the sentence, we have war in Europe. And I was like, do we though? Like, is that whole Europe that is in war right now? Or what are we doing here with the media? And yeah. I always wonder why people don't ask questions regarding that. Why do they just take that as information and given? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's different ways. There are different ways to explain this. I think, um, hmm. There's actually, I mean, I think there's different books. I don't know actually which which exactly actually to kind of like refer here. Yeah. But there's like, there's different, this is just like pure geopolitical, mm -hmm. like, like, like very kind of like black belt um, theory or yeah. black belt kind of like a uh, war and political uh, kind of like a propaganda thing. So going on. So, I mean, I had. I understand this because like you you've seen those things played in the past as well yeah. so there's there's something that says like like uh, um, one one person dying is a tragedy but 10,000 people dying is a statistics ah okay okay yeah so even like Doc. like the worst thing is just like 10,000 people that you don't know or that you could not connect with mm -hmm. is also like something that's strange to you mm -hmm. okay so in the Iraqi war, um, basically a war where they did never find like found a weapon of mass destruction. No. <laughs> so um, when there were pe people being killed or like uh, um, locals being killed or like whatever, they were calling them insurgents. Mm -hmm. 
so stripping the stripping them away from their humanity yeah. or stripping them away from like like connections that we have with them they would never say like okay um we we nuked to, we nuked to a village and in that village um five five uh five grown-ups killed with six kids mm -hmm. they would maybe say like insurgents mm -hmm. or terrorists or anything yeah. like that so and because we connect actually terrorism bad because of like 9 11 happens that makes it kind of like more acceptable to get mm -hmm. even though it's not acceptable it makes it like a little more acceptable in that sense um so how do you like how is the narrative being played is also like how how much we're going to kind of like uh, eat it up mm -hmm. let's say exactly and why why do we eat it up so much is because we are not really interested in the depth anymore we use mm -hmm. we we we're interested actually in general why is that i do think it's because we don't really have like um we don't really have time anymore which is like also like really harsh to say because we're so focused on our own objectives mm -hmm. um then if it's not our own objectives we have like our own stuff going on so there's like this individuality going mm -hmm. on not even like me but it's more us me and my community and then apart from that like information is basically scattered in terms of like a, um like now where do we get our info so maybe like not reading the news but most of the time like social media so mm -hmm. TikTok, um like instagram facebook and so on so also there like depending actually on the algorithm like you'll be presented with like a piece of news that's like kind of going what you what you believe in or like what 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 you should be kind of like, uh, looking at as well so so we get served a menu that's already made mm -hmm. and you eat it up because it's easy to eat it up and it's so what is frustrating to me is like nobody is interested in doing the legwork anymore like going out and uh -huh. asking the right questions and it also is a parallel process for me because I'm a gardener. I grow my own food and I'm like, okay, I'm getting my own information, but not everyone else does. They go to the supermarket, buy a convenient uh, food stuff that is already completely prepared. And it's the same with social media. You have all your uh, algorithms and you get exactly the amount of information and the kind of information you would eat up if we stay mm -hmm. in that picture of eating something up. <sighs> that is depressing. I just have to say that that's so depressing <laughs> <laughs> it is depressing but i think like it's um yeah yeah it's it's once again don't take yourself as a victim <laughs> no 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 it's like i'm i'm always having the feeling like uh i'm not <laughs> I'm not the victim. I'm more the person who's like peeking everyone because I'm always asking too many questions. And then people say like, yeah. but Dagmar, why don't you, why do you even think about that? It's like, because it's not obvious what you're saying to me right now doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I have a question and you need to answer the question. Of course, I know I get the humans then into the mm -hmm. mode of they need to think and they need to rethink certain stuff. But I also am at a certain point annoyed that I'm the person who's doing that all the time. It's like, can you do yeah. that for yourself, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. I, mean, I think like we we sometimes we 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 um we think that this this times have been like the worst. Ah, okay. Like these 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 are kind of like the worst times or anything mm -hmm. like that, but or like a lot of stuff a lot of stuff is happening. Um, but I think like it's just like it's is a is a it has always been like tough towards ages and and and, yeah. and so on um and during during times it's just like we we were less exposed into those mm -hmm. news and exposed into those uh yeah, those, those things and because like it's so much to process and so much actually going on everywhere we're basically kind of, hey we cannot change anything so why why bother this is like it's just too much yeah. to kind of like handle so we're <laughs> like yeah, if you would say like where would you kind of focus on um as like an action plan to 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 kind of like uh, do something differently or yeah. do like um, like help somewhere else so just like just there's a lot of things going on just like but that is the cool thing you can just concentrate on one thing you know when when i when i see because it I also hear that a lot of people say like, there's so much going on, there's so much mm -hmm. happening, I can't do anything, which makes them feel small again, which I don't understand mm -hmm. because we have 
every time something is going on and we have so much possibilities now where I think yeah. when I look at my grandmother and what my grandmother was not allowed to do as being part of USSR and uh, not allowed to have her own company or do anything or my mother yeah. who was uh, taking out of her profession uh, and then um, the wall came down and uh, the USSR broke down and then okay you don't have a job anymore it was provided before that now do whatever yeah. you need to do and the freedom that I have you know, when I went out of uh, the country mm -hmm. after my A-level, everyone was like, how could you ever do that? And it's like, because now we have the opportunity. If I would yeah. have uh, lived like uh, 10 or 20 years earlier, I wouldn't have had the opportunity. So why That's would wild. I just do it? <laughs> That's wild. Exactly. It's just wild. Yeah. And I'm always so, so grateful for that. It's like, wow, like the no. wildness I can live. It's like now no, you cannot travel. Like, yeah. what? <laughs> this is this is people can't even imagine it. And if you say like that was 32 years ago, and you're like, what? Come on, crazy. No, and everything is yeah. I understand when people say everything gets faster because everything changes so fast, but mm -hmm. I see that as the biggest opportunity that we have. The biggest yeah. the biggest thing we can change now is like you can do anything. Anything. True, but you you have to have that mindset. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You have to have that mindset. That's the thing. If you don't have like the abundant mindset or like mindset, yeah. what you call like a growth mindset, let's say, not a fixed mindset. Um, so also a good book, Mindset by uh, Carol D. Reck. Yeah. Um, where she goes like a little bit deeper in mindset. So it's really depending on, on mindset. And I think like sometimes like, like some of like, some of things, cases that happens when it comes to race, it's also like, mm -hmm. What's your mindset? Is your yeah. do you have a fixed mindset or do you have a growth mindset? Yeah. So that's also like very important, and I think like that's why like some people actually are stuck into into their ways, but also into actually their thinking. It's like the elephants. You remember it, like how they train elephants, like mm -hmm. small With elephants. With the rope. Mm -hmm. With the rope, they put they put um, they take a small elephant, they put uh, they put them on the rope, and they attach them to a small tree. Um, and basically every time they try to escape, they whip, they whip them or something like that. Yeah. And, um, from that point, they don't escape the tree because for them, the tree is like a, like escaping the tree is a trigger for pain. Yeah. And when they they're growing get up, bigger, <laughs> get bigger and bigger. The rope is still like the, this rope still uh, attached to the small tree and they, they wouldn't move. Yeah. As well. Because they're so, so conditioned. Also, yeah. yeah, and that's what's happening as well. But it's so interesting, like how how we not get out of our transgenerational topics because it's handed, I wouldn't even say because people always use the word, it's handed down to you. And I'm like, I'm not down. Why, why is anything handed down to me? It's happened before in other generations. But I always say like, no, 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 no. nobody's handing something down to me. And I also need to have mm -hmm. my arms open or my hands yeah. open and say like, I received that. What if I'm not even taking it on? I think it's like, a, it's referring to the snowball. Yeah. And the cascade. It's, it's going, like, no, nope. it, it, it's, it's going down. Yeah. So. I think it, it's, I think the, the, whatever like generational tra um, transference, generation trauma, anything like that, it's like, these are very powerful things that, that happens to like an individual. Yeah. Um, and, and the word, like the, the, one of the, the, one of the most difficult things is to break that cycle as much as possible for yourself, but also for your family and, and so on. Um, yeah. That's something like a lot of families are, are going through. And I think like a lot of families, like when it comes to like, I mean, it's like maybe black families as well are going through that. I mean, in terms of like black families, what I see happening is basically kind of like the trauma of the first generation, um, basically not being validated as human, human being, um, seeing as like inferior, but also like maybe having great jobs mm -hmm. when, when you were in your country coming here and you have to clean you have to clean toilets and things like that does a lot of things to your psyche um in terms of like a uh, valorization and, and also not knowing the, the, the language as well so it puts you so much down that you casting your 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 hope to the next generation mm -hmm. but also that next generation has like such a stress that you can like validate like success of like uh, the um the previous generation that they're also going through a sort of trauma of like a uh, 
um, like you have to succeed. Mm -hmm. And when you don't succeed, you fall down or like living without flaw, but like everybody is for, or, like uh, has like flaws. And when you succumb to that flaw, uh, flaws, yet you have like another kind of like a uh, generational kind of like trauma passed on to the next one. Um, uh, but what's happening, the first generation is basically kind of like a validation, um, integration. Those are kind of like the main topic. Second generation was what they're struggling with is basic identification and kind of like uh, identifying themselves. Like they, they are between two cultures, the African culture and also the European mm -hmm. culture. Um, they're not they're not accepted from both sides because you're not African enough or you're not European enough. Okay. And people still ask you, and people even though if you're born in Germany or whatever, people will still out, uh, ask you, yeah, where are you really from? And oh, this yeah. is like kind of like, a, mm. I mean, okay, yeah. what does that matter? Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of like a, the second generation is more stuck into like I identity. Yeah. Um, and when the older they're getting, they're more interested to the getting into kind of like to understand their their root culture as well, or the culture of uh, mm -hmm. of their father, father or mother, depending who's who's black in there. Um, and then the third generation is basically kind of like generation that might have forgotten, uh, mm -hmm. but then they have like different different uh, different things going on as well. Um, so the disconnect um, trauma. Yeah, I have a. a um... A question for better understanding. When you say first generation, you mean the first generation in a new country? Yeah. 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 Okay. So the ones that are left the original country mm -hmm. being grown up and came here. Yeah. But that is also super interesting that we refer to it like that because there were so many other generations before that. And then we are boiling it down to say, like, this is the first generation. And I'm like, fascinating. But I yeah. also know that from um, from after or before the Second World War, when people uh, had to move and flee, and then it's like, okay, that's the first generation of uh, Polish people here in Europe, uh, in, in Germany or something. And I'm like, but does that make sense? There are so many other uh, generations mm -hmm. before them. So they have a lot of heritage. And it always mm -hmm. feels to me like someone is cutting them off their heritage. Yeah, starting from zero. <laughs> yeah, starting from zero, exactly. Yeah crazy and how was that for you because actually that's a good parallel you moved into other countries uh, and then you also um on your own free choice moved into another country to work there first in the uk mm -hmm. then to uh, germany is that for you also a feeling of you're starting from zero or starting from scratch and how did you make that decision I think like I, I always was obsessed into kind of getting into uh, or having the interna international experience. I think somehow, I do think somehow like looking at like your parents moving or like your like uh, you, people that uh, um, kind of like raise you move from another country to this country, mm -hmm. um, to one of the countries, European countries, you also wonder actually, how is that experience? So. I mean, not everybody did that in my family, but like I did that because I wanted to kind of have like a like an uh, experience. So basically, that's like trickles down, same kind of effects. So moving to the UK, um, I think I, I just I, I say moving to UK, but like I I don't really kind of like uh, share how how difficult it was. Mm -hmm. Like it just like right now, just using it in a sentence, and that's it. But like it hides so much actually. It hides so much um, sweat and tears and and mindset shift that I had to go through in order yeah. to move. Uh, I remember actually, I um, after my studies, after my after my studies, I I I, uh, I, um, I signed for this company, um, French company, uh, Decathlon, and basically, I signed with one boss, and then he left, and then somebody else came in place, and we we didn't really see eye to eye. Um, and I was basically doing like a, like something in, into management. And at some point, um, I was demoted um, from my position and I basically did picking in the warehouse. So which is like, all right, you start as a manager and then you do like a, like blue color work mm -hmm. and then cleaning up the cleaning up the alleys and things like that. So that was like a, um, like a, a lesson of being humble in that sense. But from that point, I knew, okay, from that point, I, I just had a sense like this country is not a country where I can kind of progress. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like one of the time where like I 
I was like, I cannot progress because of the skin of my color. Yeah. And I have to, and I, I had to get out or I had to do something else. So I, I moved from the country, uh, from that company to go to um, Fiat Chrysler. So worked in marketing and sales. Mm-hmm. Um, so did that for a while. And then um, I decided actually to go into coaching, football coaching, just like, like intensively in, in kind of like a, doing what I wanted to do mm-hmm. for one year because I wanted to kind of like a, at least like once in my life, like doing something actually that I really loved. Mm-hmm. And, and in case it didn't work out, <laughs> I tried it. So that's that. Um, so I did it and I had like a wonderful time. That was actually one of the best times of my life. But then the opportunity for international experience came with Apple in London. I did not, I didn't even want to figure out what it was, the details of the job. I was already sold. I was like, yeah, okay. this is my, I was like, this is my, this is my ticket out. Yeah. That's it. That was, that was it. like, this is my ticket out and I'm going to take it and I'm going to give everything that I got from the interview. And I got an interview and had three weeks to leave, mm-hmm. <clears throat> leave whatever ha- I had in, uh, in Belgium to go to the United Kingdom. So leave everything in three weeks. Yeah. Wow. So like, it's very difficult because like, um, yeah. it was very difficult, but also easy because that, that's all, that's, that's the thing that I wanted to have which is like mm-hmm. one of my dreams. So I just dropped everything. I was, yeah. I think I was dating girl. I left her. I, 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 I left everything for, for uh, United Kingdom and yeah. basically arrived there, made some grave rookie mistakes. <laughs> 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 Like, like salary, you should always ask about salary, kids. Oh, <laughs> I, That's lived important. On a, I lived on a low salary, uh, salary cap. It was difficult. Um, the first six months, the first six months, what happens? Like the first six months, I didn't believe I, I made it. Mm-hmm. I didn't believe, I didn't believe I was in, in London mm-hmm. doing what I was doing in the company I was doing. So the imposter syndrome, Max. Ah, so it, it was just like, how come me, as this black kid that came from that that country and didn't have like a, this like a, a privilege, a, mm-hmm. a privilege, a, um, kind of like a, a upbringing, can do this? So it was just like I couldn't believe that I that I that I did it like for yeah. six months. So just imposter syndrome. But then like six months, I started again, okay, just chill, just like, just like enjoy, <laughs> enjoy the time. This. You've got this. Yeah. And I was just like, I just, I was just working. I was just working mm-hmm. not, uh, and going to the gym so from time to time. That's it. And then in the second year, I, I, I basically uh, decided actually to kind of like do my stuff that I do on the side, mm-hmm. um, basically build actually my social, my social life. Um, so church came in place, which is fate is always like, has been always different. Uh, um, very important for me, but also sports. So, like uh, coaching a football team that was like in the second year, and that's what I did as well, uh, and also playing uh, too. So that balance, uh, the balance, everything, and mm-hmm. yeah, I was um, I was very happy. And then, then of course um, came the, the the part where we had to make a decision um, to to come like stay in 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 the UK or move, and I was wondering. What could be? I already already knew uh, UK. I already knew actually London. Loved it, but I wanted to kind of like have a, another experience. So um, yeah, Berlin came in place, and London came in place. So I, I moved actually for Zalando, not really for Berlin. So <laughs> I didn't know what it was like, how it was, but I decided to move and never really regretted it. Mm-hmm. Um, but also a lot of like a lot of changes. I think. When you look at the, the difference in the country, I think UK everybody speaks English, so mm-hmm. there's like a level of like a um, like a level of like a um, equality when it comes to the, the, just the language. Mm-hmm. But then you also have like a, what what you see more is basically class system. You can yeah. really see actually um, elite middle class and also lower lower class by by the neighborhoods that you navigate but also by the conversation that you have as well. Um, so still like a couple of things about race as well. 
Um, but these are kind of like things that uh, that, that, that I, I still remember were like really, really, really fresh out there as well. So once again, the haves and the not haves as well. Mm -hmm. So really big differences, um, big differences in that as well. Um, in Germany, um, I cannot say Germany, it's like in Berlin, because <laughs> Berlin is not really Germany. Um, it's, it's in Germany, but it's like, you are absolutely it's a different right. city. <laughs> it's a different city. Um, so Berlin, what what I could see in Berlin is 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 kind of like a, um, so it's prides itself like to be really diverse, but like it's a camouflage diversity in the sense that it's different groups, mm -hmm. but those different groups don't really mingle that much, mm -hmm. except if they have like something in common. So the groups could be like a Turkish, African, um, or African descent, um, Asian. Um, German sp German speakers, mm -hmm. um, different groups such as like educational groups, entrepreneurship, like interest groups, just like like a lot of bubbles, mm -hmm. and those bubbles sometimes don't interact with each other yeah. um, that much. Um, so that's what's interesting in in uh, uh, Berlin. Of course, um, fair share of racism as well that happened as well, like in terms of like uh, that. I think um, I mean there was like the first like. The first time we like uh, I heard like uh, like N word in in terms of like uh, waiting I was waiting in the hospital for mm -hmm. for my for my appointment it was quite late um, so so when we and uh, I was sitting I was sitting there in the waiting room and then there was like another black guy like next to it next to me I didn't know him but then suddenly like, like this guy come comes in, comes in front of us and. Uh, and started actually to kind of like use the N word and kind of like a racial slurs uh, and things like that. Um, but we were just like busy, like just reading and all stuff. We didn't really like pay attention yeah. to it. Uh, they, they call security. And the only thing that security did, like just asking questions, but are you German? Are you really German? It's like, oh my goodness. So it's like <laughs> disappointing security, disappointing. <laughs> so yeah, that was like one and i think the second one was like more recently the second one was like yeah we um so i i coach a football team um of girls uh, women i would say um and um and it was a game where we didn't have to play because there was snow mm -hmm. so we decided actually to go to a to a small, a small cafe a bar where we had like just like a, a, some drinks um like hot chocolate and so on and we were just like telling stories and, and joking but we were like in the back end of the the, the cafe mm -hmm. um and we're just like uh, uh laughing and it's like someone um in uh um schönhauser allee so it's like one of the good neighborhoods i would say mm -hmm. um and we're just like having conversations and then laughing and then some someone in the back or someone like uh, um like that was uh, behind us started actually to kind of like uh, uh, mock, mock us and like ha 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 why are you laughing so so loud and all and all this stuff like just like someone you could see clearly with some 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 issues mm -hmm. um but we kept on going kept on conversation so it was me like six six of my uh, my my uh, my players and uh they kept on coming to us and disturbing our conversation and then um, at some point, like he dropped the N word and so on. And I, that got me really mad. And mm -hmm. I was like, I stood up and I was always, I was almost actually going to kind of like put my hands on him. And then the, the person, uh, there was a person actually from staff that came in between us. So um, they, they handled him, they called the police, the police came and the mm -hmm. police actually took a, took a, took a, um, took um, like a um, testimony of my side, but also one of my, one of, one of the, one of my players as well. Mm -hmm. So that's like quite recently. So it just like these kind of things happen, but also like, it's not surprised me just like on that, on that occasion, it was just like sad because like it was actually with, with, uh, with my players. Mm -hmm. And that's like something actually wanted them to see. I mean, some of them are 16, 17 and they're going actually through like an experience like that. So, um, so those are kind of things that happens. I mean, I think it's not the last one. Like it's it's always like something that uh, that uh, that kind of like uh, is something that doubts me in the sense like mm -hmm. um, where I ask my questions, do I see 
myself raising kids in the in this uh, in the city and most of the time it's it's a no or even like in a country mm -hmm. in this country so it's like it's it's really like um yeah, something that's uh that's still like uh, stressing me out in the sense like um yeah it's doesn't feel 100 percent like home yeah or it doesn't feel 100 percent like where where i want to be mm -hmm. um and that sense of like home for instance like which is like important to all of us um it's just like some sometimes like very very tough uh, to 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 grasp at least for me so what is home yeah. like it's just like where i i do feel comfortable where i have like a, a roof over my head so it's like not really like location although from time to time berlin starts to kind of feel like home but not totally so when i come back from a trip i i have a great kind of satisfaction to come back and uh and sleep in my own bed but uh yeah, that's 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 where it's kind of like at. Mm -hmm. And is there a place that you would uh, define or describe as home, where you think like, oh, I could go back there, and I also could imagine raising a family there? Mm -hmm. It's always like going back and also raising a family. I think like uh, going back, I would say New York was great, mm -hmm. um, loved it, but also like it's temporary. You're there as a tourist, so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like you have the tourist lens, <laughs> so. <laughs> So yeah, New York was great. That's what I loved. I think like uh, LA in the US, but also Lisbon. Um, Lisbon, um, just the quality of life, the mm -hmm. um, chillness, like the food. Um, that's also like what was uh, interesting, um, and just like people um, in general. So I would say that um, raising family, I would say. In term in in order to raise a family, I think like I would like my kids actually to kind of speak different languages, to kind of like be open. So I would say it has to be like it can be actually an international city, uh, but also it has to be affordable. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be actually uh, could be actually somewhere in Germany or somewhere in in Belgium. Um, but yeah, those are kind of concerns um, concerns that I have. So it's also like question like private school or public school. So mm -hmm. that's also like one of the things, topics actually to, to discuss as well um, in that sense. But yeah, it's um, these are questions that are really daunting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because like uh, you, you want to give you, you kids a better future, uh, yeah. of course, um, but also like make the sacrifices in order for them actually to, to have everything they, they need um, and, uh, and to make the... Um, like uh, make the, the right decision by them. So mostly being a good shepherd. Mm. And that's not always easy. You know, when you, when you said, I didn't want uh, uh, my team members, my players to see that. And that was downing to me mm -hmm. that they saw that. And even if they're 16 and 17, I think it's super important that they see that because it's still a topic. And we uh, kind of have to uh, take care of that topic and not just uh, push it inside and say like, okay, this is not happening anymore. We're so we're so open. I can just speak for Germany right now, but I do not see the openness uh, that we should have uh, for ourselves or our kids yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, true. But I mean, like, it's also like a, <laughs> it, uh, the the pitfall of like parenting and the pitfall of like uh, making a better generation is always like a. It, it's always goes with flaws mm -hmm. because we're trying to we're trying to kind of manipulate the process. Yeah. But you, we should actually uh, be shepherd of the process. Yeah. Um, I think it's also like because we we're trying to kind of make it personal, bring it actually to us. Um, but you have to understand that these people are having a different experience as well, and mm -hmm. it's also like about like helping them going through the navigate that experience. Yeah. Um, so it's mostly like giving them a guide of survival more than like, uh, telling them <laughs> how to survive. Yeah. If you could give a guide of survival, what are tips that you would give other people and say like regarding the topic of racism, like what is, what is the thing that you would give as advice to other people? Uninteresting, which skin color, which box or anything else, what is important to you? So I think like number one, don't take things personally. So I think like um, that's a big one to kind of like navigate and mm -hmm. like 
Uh, number two, there's always like ways actually in terms of like uh, um, betting yourself and uh, whatever you're going through, I think like uh, you have to remember this, 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 this always shall pass. Mm -hmm. This is, this will also, this shall uh, also pass. So you might go through like a difficult experience and it might feel certainly for young people that's like the end of the world. It's like the worst thing that you ever had. But trust me, like it's gonna pass, and then mm -hmm. like there's gonna be different challenges. But then you become resilient to like those challenges, and and you're being able to get more um, like on, on your back. So um, don't yeah don't 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 kind of like, uh, think about like uh, uh, challenges as like something that's like worse or like see it as like something that's really uh, could help you to to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, big number three. Number three, that's always like something that I ha uh, had from a young age. Always believe there's there's a there's a better scenario or something better will come. So it's come down to positiveness. Like keep positive, um, keep being optimistic, even though it's like really difficult. Um, and then like a counterpart of that, number four is basically whenever you. Whenever you are not positive or never, whenever you kind of like uh, are down, use the time to kind of like be down properly, like maybe 24 hours, 48 hours, just like, uh, just like use the time to kind of like listen to whatever is happening inside, but cap, cap it to maybe one week max in order to kind of like get, get back to it as well. Um, if you, if you want to like uh, process things inside, process things with tears or anything like that, like really use that. So um and then five don't 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 feel bad for yourself mm -hmm. i think like uh like it's um you're going through a process like uh sometimes like uh, stressing the process i think like i came back to 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 fate but like for me i always like think there's like a um a promise that was like promise that like uh, was made um with me and god and like that's like the promise that that i'm always uh referring to and whatever actually uh I'm being transported to or guided to, I'm going to get out because like, I'm already like guaranteed that, uh, that everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Um, in a sense. And that's, that's, that helps a lot. I think those are kind of like, um, um, the five things that I, that I would say like really will really help, uh, um, in general. So yeah, it's just, just a ball of like positiveness and, and kind of like, uh, making sure that, um, um, you stay all right and take what you need in order to be all right. So, yeah. Do it once. I like them. You already dropped a lot of books uh, in between, and I'm definitely going to put them in the description. Are there any additional books or workshops or anything else you would like to uh, place here for people to know about? Yeah, I feel like 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 uh, Brené Brown. Mm -hmm. Brené Brown is always like a, a good one. Um, like I don't remember the title of her of her other book, so I, I I'm looking at Dare to Lead, but that's not the one. Daring um, Greatly is also one. Daring Greatly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Daring Greatly from Brainy Brown is like so, like it's definitely kind of like a hits 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 well. And if you want to read actually a book that's like funny about like a, like a concept of racism, I would mm -hmm. say Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Born, born a crime. Born, Born a crime. Mm. One of the best books that I read. <laughs> so Absolutely. funny. <laughs> and please so, don't don't just read it. Listen to the audiobook because he's uh, reading it himself, and he's so funny yeah. when he's imitating his grandmother and everything else. It's just hilarious. Yeah. Oh man, Trevor Noah was like, uh, yeah, Born <laughs> a Crime is such a treat. Mm -hmm. Such a treat. It's one of those books like you pick up in the weekend and you finish it. In the, you know, yeah. the weekend. So definitely a good one. Um, and then there's like, um, yeah, there's different books out there, um, but like the 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 books that I read around like uh, race and, and things like that were a little bit um, sometimes a bit heavy, mm -hmm. a little bit like like personal tainted, and I didn't really like them as much as like a light uh, um, border crime, which you know. And I think like it's because like identify with his like parkour in the sense like even though all those things happened, when you see the guy, the guy is still positive, the guy is yeah. still like a uh, 
like he doesn't he doesn't come across as a victim and mm-hmm. like not using actually whatever happened as like oh because this happened this is like why i am the way i am yeah. um so he he gets all those like lessons that he learned from his grandmother mother um and also surrounding as well mm-hmm. and and he doesn't he doesn't cry about it or he doesn't like come across as like someone that's like um deeply traumatized even though it might be but um this is the kind of person that i really can stand behind um so such as like a source of like positiveness and also like humor mm-hmm. uh and so on so yeah that's where i like yeah really admire him i i saw him actually in new york as well so i uh, went to the well done. went to the recording <laughs> went to the recording of daily show uh yeah so it's always like things to make people jealous about <laughs> <laughs> And it works. It works. Now we can't do that anymore because he's not the host of the Daily Show anymore. Too sad. Yeah, it's true. Too sad. I, I still have the tickets, so <laughs> maybe I'll just frame it. <laughs> frame it. Send some pictures around and say, like, yeah, I did it. You missed the chance. Please take your chances, my dears. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I think like these these are these are a couple things that a couple books actually that yeah. uh, that um, really can help. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Then we already get to our last question. What mm-hmm. is your gift to the world, Manuel? Well, I think my gift to the world is just like a um, I think positiveness in in, mm-hmm. in 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 one way, but um, but also I don't know. I I I navigate with like a, this this um, this purpose statement. Um, help and inspire people to fulfill their full potential. Mm-hmm. It's like tint, mm-hmm. Isaac tinted a little bit, you know. You gotta copy with pride. In. Copy with pride. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, so basically, kind of like um, helping people, and inspiring, inspiring them, inspiring them actually to kind of like be the best version of themselves. Mm-hmm. I, I see this happening with my football um, at work a little bit as well. So also with coaching. I think that's just like a natural, natural, natural gift that I have. Um, I, I do hope I can kind of go far, far with it. Uh, just like, uh, yeah, this is, this is busy where I am and, and what I stand behind. And um, yeah, it's just like helping and inspire people to fulfill their full potential. I would say this is kind of like a, uh, my gift. Nice. I like that. It's really good. Then I can just say thank you very much for your time and for all your insights and all your perspective. That was a great conversation. I enjoyed it very much. Definitely. Um, I enjoyed it as well. I get to, do you think sometimes I, it went a little bit like out of structure of my side? But like, uh, I, I no, we had perfect if, structure. We had perfect structure. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that from a perspective of uh, being born in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, definitely. But thanks a lot for having me. Thank you for being on.